Welcome back to Lunchtime Live. This is this is going to be a fun one. What do we got today? Mark, 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 Mark. Yeah, Mark Nye, the science guy. So we are going to be talking about science and faith today, science. and how do science how to meet? How do we kind of interact with those as God's people? Because uh, sometimes I think we see those as not being able to meld together. Uh, so, so I'm going to just start out with this. Here's my thought. What if God put all the dinosaur bones in the earth, just like we kind of put toys in a, in a corn pool, you know, so that the kids can kind of dig around and, and find the little toys in the corn pool. What if God put the dinosaur bones in the earth just so that we could dig them, dig it up and be like, oh, what is this? That's super cool. It's an interesting thought, Pastor Bill. As, as, it is it's a fun thought. So let's talk about science and faith then. Many of you may know, or at least some of you know, that I used to be, uh, before going to seminary, a high school science teacher. Uh, so this is something that I have wrestled with in my time of going through education as a science teacher. Science has always been something I love. And, and for me, it's kind of this piece of these things that I have seen good in both of these, right? And I love kind of the idea of just looking at creation and studying it and seeking to understand it, which is really at the heart of what science is about. It's about making observations about this world that we're in. And, and yet there are places where the views of modern science do kind of conflict with our faith. And there are challenges with that. And so, but for me, having that background, I have felt uh, a lot, and I feel like even more so growing in the last couple of decades, just a view of animosity toward science by Christians in general. Uh, that there is this view that science is the enemy and almost we can't trust anything that comes from science. If you use that word, now all of a sudden, I can't trust anything you say because that's opposed to faith. And so for me, that's the thing I wanted to talk around here today. And I think there is a way that we hold these together. So um, I have my thoughts, but I want to hear from you guys in the midst of that. It is interesting, the point that you made, and I, I think we forget this, is that for a long time, scientists were the folks that were just studying God's creation and trying to figure out more about who God is. And I mean, I, to me, I guess that's, been my thought of what science is, is that science is just a, a studying, a, a finding out more about the wonder and awe of God's design and what can we determine about his attributes through it. Yeah, I, I think for me, I don't know, I, as far as science goes, I've definitely always, you know, trust some science, I do think there's some science that maybe it's like you said, like gets demonized that maybe shouldn't be demonized and then some that should be demonized. And it's because again, I do think in the same sense with science, can we, can we truly know all the things that certain scientists say? That would be kind of my, my counterpoint. And you're not, and I, which I've talked to you about this before too, but the, I have, I have certain people in my life too, that believe different things that I, I don't believe. And they want to come at me to combat it with scripture, this or that. And then it's just like we've talked about before that you can, you can make any scripture do what you want it to do. And I think there's the same way that science sometimes does with science. It's like, well, if we mix the right way, this will come out the way that we need it to come out. But I mean, because, oh, I'm, I'm blanking on where the scripture is, but it talks about, I think it's like King James Version or whatever, but it, it comes out and says that the so-called science is like foolish or something like that. And so they, they hold on to that, that it said science. And so that's, it means all science is so-called, it's false. And it's like, you can't say that one, because you're not actually digging into that scripture to know 
what that scripture is actually saying or going back to the Greek or Jewish that actually says what it says and but you're just coming up with your own you see the English word and so this is what it has to mean and so we move on yeah so just to kind of go into my own wrestling with this of course one of the biggest issues around this I think is evolution and creation and all that and so that was at a heart like in the midst of a lot of my wrestling and in my time going through college and this stuff, it was something that I never really had a, I felt like I ever had real resolution to it. Whenever I was in that, that wrestling, I would always fall back on the, I know what you have said is true God. And so I'm going to trust you even in that, even though I, I, I don't, this doesn't fully make sense to me. I don't have resolution. I don't feel like this all, you know? And so I still kind of had that wrestling and just that unresolution until I started in my first year of teaching and I came across, I was just trying to find an article and I found this article that was just talked about what is science. So for my freshman science class, I just want to start the year with, okay, what is science? What is this framework? What is this all about? And this article did is a one pager and in it, it laid out very honestly kind of a basic foundation of what is science, but also in it, it listed what are the assumptions and the limitations of science. And it was in the listing of these assumptions that really brought me to this place where I finally had resolution. Because one of the, the assumptions of modern science, and this kind of goes to a point you made earlier, Bill, but of modern science is that everything in the natural world can be explained by phenomenon, by workings in the natural world. And so the assumption, once again, an assumption is not something you can prove. Assumption is something you're taking on faith, right? That, so a faith statement, a faith truth that is taken, it underpins modern science, is that we don't need anything outside of the natural world, the physical world, to be able to explain the things that go on in the physical world. So what you're doing is you're already taking and you're saying, though we're viewing this data, we are not going to ever consider anything that isn't part of this physical world as a cause for things we see in the physical world. It already cuts God and the supernatural out. And so you never have the opportunity to view the data in that way. In some ways that does help science in pursuit of certain things that has allowed them to focus and just keep searching after there has to be a physical world explanation. But this is where we would say this view that is taken on faith, right, is not one we as Christians would agree with. We would say, no, there is a God, and this God is active in this world. And while there are things in this world that work according to the order he first put into this world, right, and there are those systems and things that we can grasp and understand and kind of see because he is a God who brings order, there are going to be things where he acts that don't necessarily make sense. We think he's still living and active in the midst of that. And while he often works within those ordered systems, he isn't bound to that, you he know? He can walk and so, on water sometimes. What? He can walk on water sometimes. Yeah. He can change, you know, water into, water into wine. And so what this means, right, is when we know what are those assumptions and then the limitations that flow from that, we can then evaluate what comes from the scientific community and say, you know, that looks like based on observations and stuff that, and what we know, like that seems to fit within what we see. And that's cool to see how we just learn to more, learn to know more of God's creation and just see, for me, I always love just seeing the complexity of everything and how everything, for me, as I discover more and see all these intricacies of the atoms and of our cells and of all that it is to just takes all the processes just to move your finger, you know, and to me, it just screams of a creator. It just points to a creator. And I, that's what I love about science. For me, it is that beacon that points to this reality of the creator and just is like, man, I'm just in awe and wonder. And I think that can be the beauty of that. And, and it is a gift from God too, to be able to, to discover those things and to figure out, you know, it has led to certain things that have been beneficial to us as humans and we're thankful for today and we give glory to God for that and yet 
once again, just like any instrument or tool we have as humans, we as broken, sinful humans also find that in ways to use that, right? That are contrary to what God would have for us. So, so okay. So these assumptions that you're talking about, yeah. Where did where do those assumptions come from? Like, how did they? Was there a, a council of assumptors that have all got together and they were like, "These are the four assumptions that we're going to make," or like, are they called that, assumptors? Charles Darwin and all of that really it came about the more naturalist viewpoint that they were like, "Okay, well, this is what we believe." Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it flows out of the Enlightenment, right? That was a big turning point for this idea of we don't need God. Man is at the center, right? We can, we are awesome humans. And so we can, we can know all things if we just keep searching. And, and I think to me, I think, you know, I, I don't think it's any one thing, but I do think the enlightenment move, enlightenment movement, right, is a big shift in the mindset that kind of led to some of these underpinnings. I think some of it too comes from there was a way in which sometimes faith like impeded the scientific process, right? Where we would say, well, you know, you think about like Galileo when, when he was like, Hey, you know, the, the earth actually goes around the sun and people are like, well, we're going to burn you then. Right? Like, I mean, it, there is places where, you know, it's hard to balance that and how do you, you do that. And so, but yeah, I think, I think some of the times that too may have led to this. I don't know. I don't know the real history of how to, I haven't tracked it, but I just know that. Yeah. Well, no, I, I'm just curious because I mean, I mean, you're the science expert in the room. I, I did, I, the last science class I took was in high school. So, but I'm curious, like, do they still hold those assumptions? Has, or is there a movement now that's like, okay, now that we've entered into like postmodernism, there's something, there's something beyond what we can experience. And I'm wondering if, if there's a science movement now that's like, okay, I mean, you you think about like string theory and like all this, this idea of like multiple universes and stuff like that. There, there are things that they certainly can't grasp and that are outside of the physical. I would imagine that there has to be some of those assumptions that they moved away, that have moved away from. I mean, yes, in some ways, but I think even those ideas of, I mean, I haven't been like those crazy physics stuff that's like seems to go contrary to the other things we we know i haven't delved deep into that right and so a lot of that is theoretical in a way right and not as but there is observational things that they've seen from that that makes them think that and you know but i think it i would still think they would call those things right of potentially still in that realm of the physical world. I mean, the only thing that I know about that stuff is what I learned off of the Big Bang Theory. So I, I got nothing else. That That's a good show. Have you seen that show? I have seen that show. Okay. However, so, I don't know if that's like makes you an expert on. Oh, on I'm that. certainly not an expert. Yeah. 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 So. But, okay, so there are, I can think of a, a couple different Christians that interact with science on a larger scale. And one of them is Ken Ham. And Ken Ham has this, he, he's the one that set up the Creation Museum and the, the Ark Encounter. What are your thoughts on the, the Creation Museum? I don't mean to just put you on the spot, but... Wow, thanks, Bill, for putting me on the no, spot here. Ken Ham, if you're listening. Well, uh, that kind of goes to one of my questions, too. Like, what what do you feel is the biggest conflicts between like i don't know say what what is the main one what is maybe the top two conflicts between science and faith or christianity that's a big question it is you're letting him off but the, I, at the ken ham. no i'm not because i'm gonna circle back around to the ken ham okay so i just i just yeah yeah, like I said, I think a big one where we have that conflict is when we talk about creation and evolution, right? And there's, you know, once again, I think as you, you delve into that, right, there are things in the way of what is communicated and seen by what science puts forth of evolution that 
just are contrary. There's some people that, you know, I've heard say, oh, you know, these things can live together. But I mean, there is a place at which, no, they are like contrasting views. One is, hey, life just kind of happened. And though they'll say, you know, the argument of science, when you say, so you're telling me it just happened by chance. They're like, well, no, not by chance because it's it's natural selection, but that still is the idea of there's still probability all over the place when with natural selection. Yes, the one that's most fit, right, is the one that's more likely to survive, but there's still all kinds of probability and chance that goes into the movement from a one-celled organism to all the diversity of, uh, of creation of animals, right, the biological world that we have today. Now I almost feel like I lost where I'm going with this. I mean, I still have to get to the point where where there's a a start of something. Yeah, and so so back to it now. I know I'm back on track. So there is this idea, right? Like that is very much by chance, right? We're we as Christians, like we believe, no, that God was God is the one who created, right? And there there is an important piece. To that truth, we can't just be like, yeah, that might be true or not. And and also beyond that, it's not just a, he's a distant creative God where he like created things and then set them in and set them in motion and then stepped back and, you know, now he's, he's distant. Like, because that's not the God we see in the Bible. Like, and so that idea, right, when you try to overlay the fullness of all of what science says of evolution with what the Bible says, there is differing worldviews there. There are different views and they do matter for us in our faith of who we believe God to be. And I think that's an important piece of that creation, right? Of of declaring that, that God is a, a God who has always been intimately involved with his creation. And, and he, he is the source of all of, of life and all that is in this universe. That is an important thing for us to hold to as God's people. And, and so I think, you know, that's one of the, probably the biggest things out there. And that's the one you hear of probably the most, I think, out there is, the, is in that. Now, once again, in that, is there pieces of what are declared in that or what has been seen and described and in the the theory of evolution that we as Christians can say, yeah, we would agree with that. Well, yeah, I think there are pieces of that. I've often talked about that as this division of macroevolution versus microevolution. And once again, there's all kinds of debate about, oh, well, can you? But I think there we do see, and if you think of evolution as, right, that change in in organisms over time, right? We do see that, right? We see viruses and bacteria that that mutate and change in response to different external forces and, and some of those different things. We see that in us as humans over time, how that has changed. And, and so I think there's pieces of that where we would say, yeah, we agree with that because, yeah, we see that happening, but there's pieces of this that, that do go up against right? That are contrary to what we would hold like tenets of the faith that are, are important, are foundational. There are adaptations, but it's not like these are, it's not like a squirrel can adapt into a turtle. Well, I was going to say, or yeah, right. Like, but the word evolution, you know, I mean, growing up for me was definitely, it was like, yeah, that's bad, bad, bad. Evolution, bad. Play Pokemon. Yeah. Then, then. I don't know if that was exactly the reason I couldn't, but I know I couldn't. Right. But yeah, I do think that, you know, we all, we evolve. It's, you're not going to change species, but you're going to evolve. Like we evolve every day. The more you learn, you're evolving, you're, you're learning more. Like, and I, and I do think that, yeah, I think sometimes that's characteristic. Sometimes that's other things, but. Well, well, here's, so here's, you just brought up the word species, right? So here's something that I always find funny that never gets talked about, right? In the midst of this conversation is that the fact that these categories of species and however, the other ways that we categorize animals are created by us, 
there are ways that we have come to organize things that we can make sense of them. And sometimes we, it's talked about in the science community where I think we, it's talked about as if there's, these are like these just innate, like distinctions between things that are, are, they're like, it's a true distinction. Like, oh, this species, this organism is definitely different than this one, right? And here's our basis for why they're different. And how we categorize them actually has changed over the years of science. It used to be a lot by their, how they looked and their functions and different things they had. Now, a lot more that science has begun to categorize them based on similarities in DNA, right? Because that has advanced a lot more. And so it's just interesting. We try to make these be like, oh, these are cut and dries, you know, but no, these are systems we've come up with to say, well, here's, okay, yeah, now this is a different thing. And there's a lot of argument around times, at times, is this thing actually different from that thing or not? You know, and so it's just, I don't know, interesting to me of how sometimes it's talked like a, well, of course this is different than this, but no, there's, once again, this is a framework that we have created to help understand and make sense of God's creation, right? And while, you know, they look at DNA similarities and differences and say, well, this shows that they were descended. Well, no, the other way you look at it from a creation standpoint is, well, we have a God who created all these things. And so, yeah, he's going to create, there's going to be a lot of similarity in DNA and things that look similar to each other might have similarity in DNA because, right, that's how God created the backbone of that to, to flow out of that. So that's just an example of one of the ways in which how you, where you're starting from determines how you view that data, right? Right. The thing you observe. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's kind of back to your belief system too, right? Because I mean, I, even when you were saying that, I'm like, well, you know, I can, I can back that up biblically. Like, you know, what did God say he created? He had the birds of the air, fish of the sea, the animals on land. And, and it's like, right. So you're never going to see a fish turn into a bird. That's not going to happen because those are different, different things that God created, species, whatever we want to call them. But I get, I get what your point is too, but I'm like, how Ken Ham would use the phrase kinds. He would use the different kinds because it's kind of King James version too, I think too. But yeah, and I would agree. And that's kind of where, whenever you brought up Ken Ham, it kind of reminded me of that too, because one of the people I grew up listening to was, it wasn't Ken Ham. What is his name? I can't think of it. Science guy. Absolutely not. I wasn't allowed to watch him either. I always called him the dinosaur man because he talked about dinosaurs from creation and everything else and had the biblical sound behind it. But I mean, he he had a lot of evolution debates, Christianity wise, creation evolution debate. So here's my thing. Since I'm going to finally come to your question, Bill. So I think there can be some good in some of the things that Ken Ham and the Creation Museum put out, right, of trying to to take the data that is out there, right, or the observations that are out there and see them from a biblical standpoint, a big, biblical framework, right? And so there's there's good in that. My struggle is that at times it seems like we're trying to argue people or prove people into faith from that, that we think we have to prove, you know, this open and shut case. And here's the issue. Neither side can ever a hundred percent prove their case. Right. There is still faith involved in either place. Right. So you talked about, right. So here's the argument when you talk about where did things come from, right? Those from the science community or who see faith as stupid, right. And you're, you're just, oh, you just believe things blindly on faith. Though, once again, I would challenge that they too have faith assumptions that are underlying with how they're viewing things. They, they would say, well, where did God come from? You know, when we say God created all things, well, where did that God come from? Right. On the other side, we would say, they would say, oh, you know, there was this big bang, but then the question is, okay, but where did all that matter that was compressed into this small little ball before it all exploded out? Where did it come from? Right. And so no one has an answer, right? Both of those are unanswerable questions for both of them, right? 
You gotta have faith we don't, somewhere. We don't have a we don't have an answer of where God came from. I, I don't know how that works. I just he was. And and I don't get how that works, right? But I trust this is true, right? Yeah. That and for them, well, where did where did that matter come from? Well, well, I don't know. If we keep searching, then we'll you know, and so there are these pieces, right, in which and there's other places in there where you can put all the facts, but there's no open and shut case. There's still questions and things that can't be explained, right? On either side, or I can't give you like a open and shut proving, right? Like once again, when it comes to faith, yeah, I believe that creation screams of a creator, but I can't, I can't prove, I can't can like necessarily just give you a bunch of evidence that necessarily proves that. There's always can be a counter argument to that, that someone can say, but, oh, well, that's just blah, 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 you know? And so, sure. I think there can always be a counter argument because people like to argue, like, like it doesn't matter what it is. Like that is, it, I can, I can, I can make up whatever I want to make up to say it. But then it's like, I feel like with science in itself, like, I feel like there's been a lot of things just in my lifetime that science has done to prove the Bible correct at the same time. And yeah. so it's like, how, how do you, you know, go from when you were talking about like the big bang and the other things, I'm like, well, yeah, I think that's always been a struggle for me to go from sure. Yes. We can't say where God came from, but biblically we just say he was, and I mean, that gets, you know, hard to understand, hard to grasp, but that is, that is our belief. And again, like Bill said, it, it, it's that faith, it's that belief that is. But in the same way, then you talk Big Bang, but you're saying it came from nothing. You can't get anything from nothing, and nothing is nothing. But again, it's because of their their assumptions of it has to it has to be explained within the system. So, uh, Mark, let me ask you. Yeah. What was your favorite thing in science to teach? So I loved. So my favorite area was the life sciences, biology, anatomy, and physiology. And for me, it's because once again, as I looked at that, as I look at creation, as I look at the complexity of how life in these ecosystems, it just depends on one another, how, you know, in the bodies of organisms, just all the different things that have to happen and go right the steps just for small things, let alone the complex things that happen and how all of this for me just screams of a creator. And it just interests me so much to just discover like, oh, that's really neat or that, you know, just to find out more about that. And I love to, to help others see that and experience that and teach, you know, and, you know, and those types of things of how, how does that all work and, and come together and, and all of those things. So, yeah, I don't know if that's, that's part of it. I think part of it is just being able to, and I don't know if this is the teaching, but like part of it for me, why I love science is because in my personality, I love to just be able to look at all the pieces and be able to kind of put the pieces together, you know, the puzzle, like, oh, I see this thing happening over here and this here, you know, this and this and this probably means this, right? And and just to kind of like, okay, what, is there anything else that seems to support that? Or, you know, and that, that's kind of the idea of, of science is just like looking at, okay, what are, what am I observing? What are the potential pieces that the explanation that comes from that and to see that phenomenon and, and how that's all ordered together. Uh, so anyways, so if a church member is like, man, I really want to start getting into science and reading science and, and all of that, what were, what would be some, some encouragement or some precautions even to say, okay, this is how you would know, like, this is within the boundaries of what we believe. And this is how, you know, it's not in the boundaries of what we believe. I mean, I think certainly if it is, if it is, if it is taking out God in the of the equation. I think that is something that we should say, like, no, that's, 
Yeah. That's not what we believe. God is there yeah. in the equation, and you can't take him out. Well, or would it be also, because you had kind of brought this up a few times, but what is observable? So I can't observe something to know how it was created, how it was this, to the things that are not observable, that are past. I mean, you know, I we don't have to get into this right now, but I mean, even my thought on like carbon dating or different things of that nature, that it's like you can't, you can look at a rock and say this, but you can't actually go in the past to see how long that's been there. Yeah. And I think, I mean, so for some of that, right, it is looking at patterns that we see, we have actually observed, and we haven't seen anything to show us differently from that in the years that we have studied it. Now, here's where my precaution would be, right? Because this has happened in science over the years where we don't seem to, for a long period of time, this theory, this thought seems to hold true until we discover it doesn't in all circumstances, right? And so there is always that, that way, and this has always been kind of one of my struggles, right? In which it's been pervaded as what science knows right now is truth. But even in science itself would say, no, that's not actually what we're saying. What we're saying is this is the best of what we know right now. And with further questions and further observations and thir further whatever, we might find something different. We might actually find a case where it doesn't hold true. And now this, we have to rework our whole framework of what we had, right? And so I think, you know, for some of those things, there are some assumptions we can try to make based off of, of that. Right. But I think going back to your question, Bill, like, I do think there is something to this idea of, okay, what are the observations we're using? Right. So what is the data for that? So then what, what kind of thinking about, okay, here's how the data is seen and this is what this group of people is saying, hey, this is what this data seems to communicate. I think it is a testing against God's word and against, right, what we believe, you know, of, hey, does this seem to go contrary? Does it take, I think that's a good one of, if it takes God out of the equation, right, then that is an issue, right? But, but once again, there is a way in which God has also ordered the world. And so, I don't know, I think, I don't know that I'm giving any great clarity on this, but I, I think that's part of it. But part of it too, is to say, Hey, if I'm starting from this place of belief in, in God, right. And my faith, is there a way in which this data that I'm given that are actual observations that I might see that in a different way that is not being considered, right? Are there certain, are there certain ways of seeing this data that are not being considered? I think that's always a good question. And I think scientists, even as they come to peer review things, right, they're doing those things. It's just in the modern framework of science, the idea that there's any supernatural forces involved or right in any of that is, is not considered. That's not considered science. So I think that's the place of, okay, how could, as I come to these things, are there other ways to see this data? I would imagine too, a piece of it is not just is, are we taking, are they taking God out of the equation? But the opposite of that is how are we seeing God in the science? Yeah. And, um, I would suggest that if we are heading into science that is taking our focus off of God and putting focus on anxiety or worry or, or something that is keeping us from admiring the goodness and the creation of God. Um, I would say that's part of, that's probably a, a struggle there too. Like, man, God gave us this and he is inviting in us into this place where we can discover more about his creation. Yeah. And but if we start to take our eyes off of him, it's, is that any, yeah. is that beneficial anymore? Yeah. And I think too, the care of creation is yeah. something we've been called to. It's a, in the garden that we're called to this care of creation yeah, as so well. Do it. And so how do we not only discover more about it, but how do we, how are we 
engaging with all of that, each other, but also, right, the world around us in a way that is honoring of, of that truth. Okay, so as we uh, close out, as we wrap up, just real rapid fire, yes or no questions, Mark, scientist Mark. Uh, aliens? Scientist Mark, I like it. Aliens? What about them? Yes or no? Yes or no? Maybe. Maybe. Bigfoot. She's a yes or no question, Mark. Yes or no. I don't feel like that's a yes or no question. Is the megalodon? Is that another maybe? The megalodon? Yeah, megalodon. And what is in Antarctica? Ooh, that's a good one. Ice. All right. My conspiracy is shit. We better close this before I... No, I think that's great. I think, I think we definitely... This, this should not be a one-week thing. I think we should... I think we could dive deeper on a few topics in there. I think it would be fun. Like Bigfoot and aliens, you know. But next sorry. week, Mark is going to talk all about politics. So... It'll be a good time. Not really, but... It would be a good time. It would be a good time. Good. It would be a good time. But I don't think Mark is going to talk about politics. I feel like we should have ended this podcast about a minute ago. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. And that will close our lunchtime live this week. See you next week.